loss of exponent. Here's the list of loss of exponent you can apply in multiplying or dividing polynomials. Let us start with the product law. When you are multiplying expressions with the same base, what you have to do is to keep the base and add their exponent. For example, we have here 2 cubed times 2 squared. As you can see, they have the same base. Both are 2. So what you have to do is to keep the base, then add their exponent. It will be 3 plus 2. 3 plus 2 will give us 5. Therefore, the exponent of 2 will become 5. And 2 raised to 5 is the same with multiplying 2 to itself 5 times. So it's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And it will give us the result of 32. So the answer is 32. Another example. For example, we have x raised to 5 times x raised to 4. So as you can see, they have the same base. Therefore, we have to keep the base and add their exponent. 5 plus 4 will give us 9. So the answer is x raised to 9. While for quotient law, since this is division, the same process, only that instead of adding them, what you have to do is to subtract their exponent. Only if they have the same base, the numerator and the denominator. If they have the same base, you have to subtract their exponent. Minuend is from the numerator and subtrahend is from the denominator. For example, 4 raised to 7 over 4 raised to 5. So as you can see, they have the same base. Both are 4. So what we have to do is to copy the base and subtract their exponent. It will be 7 minus 5. So 4 will be raised to 7 minus 5. 7 minus 5 will give us positive 2. So now we have 4 squared. And when you simplify 4 squared, it is the same with 4 times 4. So your answer will be positive 16. Next is power of a power. If an exponential expression is raised to another exponent, what you have to do is to multiply their exponent. For example, we have here 2 cubed raised to 2. So 2 has already an exponent of 3, but it is raised again to another exponent. What you have to do is to multiply this 2. This case is different from the product law. Since in product law, both of the expression has the base of 2. So here, if you encounter this case, what you have to do is to multiply their exponent. Keep the base, so we still have 2, and multiply 3 times 2. So 3 times 2 will give us 6. Therefore, it will be 2 raised to 6. And 2 raised to 6 is similar to multiplying 2 to itself 6 times. So you will get, so 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32, and times 2, that will be 64. So the answer is positive 64. Next one. For power of a product, if these two factors are raised to a single exponent, then you have to distribute this exponent in each of this variable. So it will be a raised to n and b raised to n. For example, we have here 3y raised to 2 or 3y squared. So it means that since 3y is inside the parentheses, it means both of this must be raised to 2. So, therefore, we will distribute this exponent to each of this. 3 will have the exponent of 2, as well as the variable y will also have the exponent of 2. Then after that, simplify. 3 squared, or 3 raised to 2, is just the same with 3 times 3. Therefore, this will be equal to 9. And then y squared, just copy. So the answer is 9y squared. Another example. 2m cubed n squared raised to 4. So 2m cubed n squared, they are all inside the parentheses that is raised to 4. Therefore, we have to distribute this 4 to each of these factors. Okay? But if it has exponent, what you have to do is to multiply them because we will use the 
law of exponent, which is power of a power. That if there is an exponent inside that is raised to another exponent, we need to multiply them. So let us start with 2. This 2 must have the exponent of 4. And then m cubed, since m has an exponent, it means you have to multiply its exponent to 4. So you'll have m 3 times 4. 3 from m and 4 from the exponent outside. And then n squared, it will be n raised to 2 times 4. So let's simplify. 2 raised to 4 is the same with multiplying 2 to itself 4 times. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 will give us positive 16. And then for m, 3 times 4, of course, 3 times 4 will give us 12. So we have m raised to 12. Then here, 2 times 4 will give us positive 8. So n raised to 8. The answer is 16, m raised to 12, n raised to 8. Then, for power of a quotient, same with power of a product, you have to distribute the exponent outside to each of these terms. For example, you have your x over 4 inside the parentheses and they are raised to 3. So, therefore, x must have the exponent of 3. Also, the denominator 4 must have exponent of 3. Then, after that, simplify x cubed, it will still be x cubed, while 4 cubed, you have to multiply 4 to itself. So 4 times 4 times another 4, you will have positive 64. So the answer is x cubed over 64. Another example, 2a raised to 7 over 5b cubed raised to 2. So here, 2a raised to 7 over 5b cubed is inside the parentheses and they are all raised to the exponent 2. So it means each of this must be raised to 2. If the given variable has already an exponent, you have to multiply them. So let's start with the numerical coefficient 2. It must be raised to 2. Okay, the exponent is from here. And then a raised to 7 raised to 2. It means what you have to do is to multiply 7 and 2. 7 times 2 will give us positive 14. So, A will be raised to 14. Okay? Again, we just multiply 7 and 2. Then, for the denominator, 5B cubed raised to 2. So, 5 must have an exponent of 2. And then, B cubed, since it's already have an exponent, you have to multiply it to 2. So, 3 times 2 will give us positive 6. So it will be b raised to 6. Then after that, simplify. 2 raised to 2 can still be simplified into 2 times 2. You will have positive 4. And then a raised to 14, you just have to copy it. Then 5 squared is the same with 5 times 5. You will have 25 and b raised to 6, you just have to copy it. So the answer is 4, a raised to 14 over 25, b raised to 6. Another law, we have zero exponent. That any number raised to zero, it must be equal to 1. As in any number, even a million, if it is raised to zero, it is just equivalent to 1. For example, 3y of this is raised to zero, so it means that it is equal to 1. What else? For example, we have 2m cubed n raised to 2, and all of these have an exponent of 0. Therefore, this will just be equal to 1. So again, any number raised to 0 will just be equal to 1. Another example, what if we have x raised to 0, y squared? Since x raised to 0 is equal to 1, it will just be the same with... 1 and then y squared. Okay? 1 and y squared. Since x raised to 0 is just equivalent to 1. And we know that if the variable has a numerical coefficient of 1, we do not have to write 1. So the answer will just be y squared. Another law. So we have here negative exponent. 
any expression raised to a negative number, you have to get its reciprocal to make the exponent positive. For example, 2 raised to negative 3. So the exponent is negative. To make it positive, you have to get the reciprocal of 2. So when we say reciprocal, if it is numerator, you have to write it in the denominator and vice versa. So it will be, since 2 is over 1, to get its reciprocal, you just have to write 1 in the numerator and 2 in the denominator. And once you get its reciprocal, the negative exponent will automatically be positive. So now we have here 2 raised to 3, 1 over 2 raised to 3. And to simplify this, of course, you have to multiply 2 3 times to itself. So it's 2 times 2 times 2, you will have positive 8. So the answer will be 1 over 8. Another, what if we have a situation like this? x raised to negative 5 and y raised to 3. The only negative exponent we have here is with x, while the exponent of y is positive. It means... We will just get the reciprocal of x but not of y. So y will still be in the numerator, while x must be transposed in the denominator. So how is that? Let's get the reciprocal of x. So that will be 1 over x raised to 5, while y will still be in the numerator. So multiplying 1 and y cubed, it will just be equal to y cubed in the numerator and then x raised to 5 in the denominator. It means those with positive exponent will still be in the same position and those with negative exponent, you have to um, get its reciprocal. So now we have y cubed over x raised to 5. Second case we have, 1 over b raised to negative n, so the variable with a negative exponent is in the denominator. Vice versa, to make it positive, still you have to get its reciprocal. So since it's 1 over b, it will become b over 1, or it will just be equal to b raised to n because 1 is the denominator, we are not writing it anymore. For example, 1 over 3 raised to negative 2. So this 3 raised to negative 2, we just have to write it in the numerator, while 1 must be in the denominator. Or in short, this will just be equal to 3 raised to 2 because we are not writing the denominator 1 anymore. Okay, We do not need this. So we, we may just write 3 raised to 2. And 3 raised to 2 is the same with multiplying 3 to itself. 3 times 3, that will be equal to positive 9. Another example, what if we have this x raised to negative 2 over x raised to negative 3? Both of their exponents are negative. So to get their reciprocal, it means we just have to exchange their position. It means y will be in the numerator and x will be in the denominator. So after you do that, their exponent will be positive. Why? from the denominator will be in the numerator and x from the numerator will be written in the denominator. 